going to be cutting a rebate along this edge here and it's going to be cut cross grain so I need to engage the spur in the main stock. Clamp the work securely to the bench with a backing block at the end of the rebate. I'm going to be cutting a 3 8 of an inch rebate so I've installed the next largest cutter which is a half inch cutter into the main stock of the plane and I've advanced it so it's just poking through below the sole. Because I'm going to be cutting cross grain I'll need to engage the spur or nicker in the main stock. With the spur engaged it will score the cut before the cutter comes along and it will prevent tear out on the top of the work. Now I position the sliding section so that it gives support to the blade in the area towards the edge of the cut. Because it's a half inch cutter some of it's going to be hanging over the edge when we're only cutting three eighths of an inch. Adding that extra support behind the blade in the right position will help to hold it more firmly and make the cut easier. Now I can set the front depth stop to prevent the plane cutting any deeper than I want to go. I'm going to use this little block as a gauge for that depth. And finally I can attach the fence. We need to cover some of the cutter with the fence so we use the top two holes to attach it to the rails and again we can use a gauge block to gauge the position of the fence. This is an adjustable fence so I've set it a little bit wider than it needs to be and then using the adjustment mechanism I slide the fence over until the gauge block lines up with the side of the main stock, the spur and the edge of the cutter and I'll lock that adjustment off. So just to cover the main points again we've installed a cutter that's wider than the cut we wish to make, we've turn the spur up in the main stock because we're doing cross grain work we've set the depth stop for the depth of the rebate we wish to make and we've set the fence away from the main stock the width of the rebate we wish to make. One final thing to check is that when you sit the plane on the depth stop on the side of the work where you're cutting the rebate you want to make sure that nothing fouls the bottom of the plane. It could be when you're doing a rebate in something thinner that the fence is going to hit the bench and in that case you'll need to set your work over off the side of the bench or raise it up off the bench so that you've got that clearance underneath. The first thing I want to do is set the plane off the end of the work with the fence up against the side and then draw it back a couple of times so that the spur scores the work I'll just make it easier on our first stroke with the plane. So placing the fence up against the work and the sole of the plane down on the work, we can take a first cut. We've set it very fine so you'll probably find it will skip in places unless the work's dead flat. Just take a couple of passes and soon you'll find that the cutter is engaging 
through the whole length of the rebate. Now's a good time to advance the, the cutter a little bit. The thickness of the shaving you'll be able to take will depend on both the width of the rebate, the wood that you are cutting and the sharpness of your cutter. I'm going to advance the cutter a little bit more because I'm finding it very easy going at the moment. Once I'm down to depth, I disengage the spur, set the blade for a very fine shaving and just make a couple of passes to tidy up the bottom of the rebate. And there we have a rebate which is the exact depth we wanted and the exact width we wanted. Rebating with the Stanley 45, a piece of cake. Cheerio!